Welcome to part two of this Football Manager 2016 experiment featuring Australia and New Zealand. If you haven't watched part one, please check that out first. You know what this is all about. Thank you to everyone that watched part one. Thanks for all the feedback. Thanks for all the likes. It's much appreciated as ever. If you can once again smash 250 likes on this video, then I will do a part three where I holiday quite far into the future, probably towards the end of the century. Anyway, in today's video, I'm going to go a few World Cups. As you can see, I've already holidayed to the end of the 2030 World Cup, which was won by Croatia, beating Germany in the final. Croatia, one of Australia's rivals, actually, uh, because of historical reasons. A lot of Australians descend from Croatia, I do believe. But very well done to Croatia, a team that you probably wouldn't expect to win the World Cup, but certainly have the potential to win the World Cup. But let's see how Australia did and New Zealand. New Zealand third in a group, very unlucky not to grow, go through in a group consisting of Russia and Holland. They lost out on goal difference really against Holland as you can see there. And Australia bottom of their group, two points. Very tough group though featuring Spain, Colombia, Czech Republic. A little bit disappointing for Australia though. I mean they've done very well to boost their um, ranking. They've been as high as third which is fantastic. Really, really fantastic. Uh, to, to get up there. Mal Jedinak is the manager of Australia at the moment. I'll probably be boosting the manager stats for part three if we don't see Australia or New Zealand win it in this part. You can see the top players here is someone playing for Barcelona, Matt Waters, who it looks insane. He, he's a very, very good player. If we just look at his current and potential ability, you can see 181 current ability, world-class player, very good play. They've also got someone playing for Chelsea. I think we saw before a right back, Ola Renshaw, 31 years old now. He, he's a decent player, very decent player. He's played for Chelsea for many years now, as you can see there. Let's just have a look at the national team though and see what sort of potential there is in this squad. You can see Scott Williams has 193 potential. He's 24 now, so he's probably not going to reach that. But he is playing for PSG. Looks like a very good attacking midfielder, you can see there. And they've got a few other players that certainly have potential to be world-class players. Uh, a lot of them haven't actually reached that. That may be due to, due to coaching. Maybe they didn't move to Europe soon enough. A lot of players have moved to Saudi Arabia, as you can see there, which is quite random. But looking down the, te the, the teams, you've got players with potential in the young squads, as you would expect, because we have adjusted the youth rating of, the, of Australia and New Zealand, you will remember. Let's just have a look at the Australian... Hyundai A-League to see who's been winning it recently. You can see who the top teams are there. Wellington Phoenix, remember, they're actually a team from New Zealand, but they play in the A-League, and they've been doing very well and actually the top rating in um, in Australia, which is quite ironic, really, considering they're actually a New Zealand team. I don't think they can qualify for the, the uh, Asian Champions League, though, unfortunately. You can see here, Wellington Phoenix has been very successful over the last few years. Melbourne Victory have won the last couple of seasons. So The Asian Champions League. So who's been winning this then? We saw the last team to, to win it from Australia is actually Western Sydney Wanderers, which was before the start of this experiment. Since then, we've seen Saudi Arabian teams dominating and a couple of South Korean teams as well, as you probably would expect there. They're a strong country in the Asian Champions League. But there's been a few Australian teams, runners-up, Central Coast Mariners, Perth Glory, Brisbane Raw, Sydney FC, but they haven't quite managed to get to that top level yet that you would hope they would be able to get to simply because we have improved the clubs. Let's just have a look at New Zealand then. 46th in the world, 41st. I think that's the highest they've been. They've been doing quite well. They've got Ramon Tribuli in charge, who's... A bit of an average manager, admittedly. Perhaps if we put a better manager in charge, they'll actually have a, uh, more success in the World Cup and, and winning other competitions as well. You can see here, top players. Let's just look at the national team. You can see they've, they've produced players that have potential to be good international players. Probably Paul Illich is the, the one that has been um, their best player. He's played for Fiorentina, but has, didn't reach his potential certainly didn't reach his potential. They've got someone, Michael Mitchell, who's got 177 potential, and he's only 18, so he certainly could could get up there if he works hard, perhaps moves to Europe. We'll see what happens to him. Looking at the clubs, you can see here the top team, Southern, quite simply called Southern, two and a half star 
re- reputation, the only club in New Zealand that actually has a two and a half star reputation. So well done to them. You can see that the Premier Premiership has been won. It's been a mixture of teams. Hawks Bay when it comes a couple of times. Team Wellington, Can- Canterbury United, Eastern Suburbs as well. Southern actually haven't won it since 2021. They've been runners up a couple of times, but they're still the highest reputation team. Just going to quickly look at the 2034 World Cup. You can see Germany currently top of the world rankings. Australia have been as high as third once again. They haven't quite managed to get up to second or first. They're down to 15th, probably, because they had a, a poor World Cup. We'll have a look in a second. I'll we'll just go to competitions and see how they've been getting on. Asian Nations Cup, they have won the last couple of times, though, which is good. They had... Hadn't won it since 2015, Japan, Iran, but then Australia, two times in a row, have managed to win this competition, which is good to see. Uh, Confederations Cup, they haven't done anything in that so far, but the youth competitions, they've done pretty well, as you can see down there. Okay, let's just look at the World Cup. So they finished fourth in Group C once again. Germany, champions beating Belgium in the final, cracking teams on the game. You can see here, Australia, bottom of their group, below Austria, Brazil, and the current holders at the time, Croatia. And I don't think New Zealand even qualified for this one. They're not going to qualify for every single one. They have to go through a playoff to get out of the Oceania group. That is quite tricky to do. Perhaps I could have moved them into the Asian one before the start of the experiment. Uh, but I think it would have been just as hard for them to get out of that as well, if I'm honest. Consisting of South Korea, Japan, Australia, other teams as well that can certainly make it to the World Cup. So the 2038 World Cup was won by Argentina, 2-1 against Spain in the final. And it doesn't look good for Australia and New Zealand, this does it? Are they ever gonna be able to get out of their group, let alone win this competition? Australia third in their group in a pretty, a very hard group with England and Brazil. <sighs> they're, just, they're not getting a lucky break, are they? Uh, New Zealand didn't actually qualify for this one either. Yeah, it's gonna be really tough. Once again, highest is third. Uh, in recent years, fifth they've been high. They were in the top 20 consistently. In fact, they haven't been outside the top 20 for many years now. We've got someone else in charge, a different Australian in charge now, Alex Brosk. They've got a couple of players playing for AC Milan. He's, he looks very good. Uh, let's just go to the national team. The highest current ability is Scott Williams, the attacking midfielder. Potential-wise, that was him as well. He didn't reach that. Kylie, uh, Kyle Dodge also didn't manage to reach the 190 I mean if they're to reach 190 193 they'd basically be the best player in the world but they not no player has managed to get up that high yet which is a bit frustrating New Zealand really have dropped off they're down to 95th in the world they've got this chap uh, someone from New Zealand Bill Taluma in charge of the nation they need to get a better manager I think to have a better chance of winning this now this is where I've changed things up I've actually improved the reputation of both the Australian A-League and the New Zealand Premiership just to see what happens. I've never really fiddled with reputation before because it can screw things up. I don't know what will happen if I improve the reputation of the actual competition. I don't know if that will impact the, the clubs. If you improve the reputation of the actual clubs, it suddenly produces really world-class players just like overnight. The same if you change the reputation of a nation. It just completely, it's not, it, it spoils the point of these videos because it literally just overnight creates amazing players it would be like just i don't know cloning messi and introducing him as he is right now into a nation effectively but we might fiddle with that at a later date just to see what does happen i just wanted it to be a bit more of a natural process where they're able to create their own youngsters and then hopefully develop them but so far no i know that new zealand or australia have managed to produce a player that has managed to reach that potential that they have been born with, as you can see here. Once again, New Zealand producing good players, but they haven't quite managed to get to that standard yet. Okay then, really interesting. Australia didn't win the World Cup, but Austria did. They managed to beat England on penalties in the final of the 2042 World Cup. Almost there. It wasn't quite Australia, but Austria, that's the next best thing, I guess. New Zealand bottom of their group. At least they qualified for this World Cup, but they didn't win a single game, didn't get a single point. And Australia finished third once again, behind France and Croatia. <laughs> it's frustrating, this. they're just not quite there, are they? They're, they're so high in the world rankings, but they're just not doing it at the World Cup level. By the way, I did improve the reputation of both the A-League and the New Zealand Premiership, like I said, but it dropped back down 
to two and a half stars. So I've done it again, but I think it just automatically reduces it over the over time, which is a bit annoying. So I think the next best thing, perhaps in part three, is to actually improve the reputation of all the clubs and see what happens there. Let me know if you think that's a good idea. I'll also improve all the youth coaches at these teams. Obviously, some of them will move on. That's the problem. I can't just continuously update them. It sort of defeats the object. I was hoping these countries would be able to produce good youth coaches because I've improved the the sport's importance to the country and that sort of thing. So you would have thought, and, and financial power, you would have thought they would pump more money into coaching and therefore be able to then create better coaches who in turn would create better players but it's not quite working perhaps the game just isn't built that way I, I don't know here's the the history of the, the last few seasons for those of you interested Newcastle Jets have been particularly dominant over the last few years you can see there but it is a little bit frustrating how we're just not quite getting there with Australia in particular New Zealand are a long way behind in terms of uh, you know players being produced and I suppose they're not that far behind they may be miles behind in the world rankings they haven't got to every single world cup like Australia but when they have got there they've pretty much done the same as Australia uh, what's the point in qualifying for every single world cup if you're just going to finish fourth and third in the group every single time you need to try and make progress you can see here southern have been dominant over the last few years in New Zealand Let's just have a quick look at them. They've got a three-star continental reputation, which may have been because of improving the reputation of the competition, which then dropped off, just like in um, Australia. You can see here, they're up to 55th. They've been as high as 47th, which is much better, but still not good enough. You can see Oceania Nations Cup, they have been completely dominant in it. They've won it every single year since the start of this experiment. As you would expect, they really should be winning that competition every single time. And, and the and that's it. They've not won anything else, I don't think. You can see here, World Cup. They've qualified for three so far in this competition. And actually, the last time, 2042, was their worst performance, finishing fourth in Group B. They finished third previously. So that's a bit disappointing. I'm going to go one more season in this part two. So we're going to go up to the 2046 World Cup. Here we go then, Germany managed to win the 2046 World Cup, second time during this experiment, they beat Norway 2-0 in the final, so well done to Norway to get, for getting to that final. Now I've had so many requests for people, from people wanting me to do the Nordic countries or Scandinavia or particular Scandinavian countries, now I will definitely get round to that at some point I promise. So I'm, I'm thinking of doing Nordic countries, so that would include Scandinavia, Norway, Sweden and Denmark. But then some people sort of think Finland's included in Scandinavia when technically it's not, I don't think. So if I say Nordic countries, that would include Finland and also Iceland as well. So I think perhaps that would be an interesting one, those five nations. So that would be uh, an experiment at some point. Also home nations, people have asked me to do Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland as well. I could include in that uh, just to see how they compete against England. I wouldn't improve England simply because... They're already incredibly good on the game, aren't they? So it'd be interesting to see if the other home nations could catch up with England and possibly win that. So that's another thing I could do at some point as well. Both of them will be completed at some point. No promises of when, but they will be completed at some point. Anyway, back to this. 2046 World Cup. New Zealand finished bottom of their Group B. Zero points once again. But at least they qualified for this one. Australia qualified. Hip, hip, hooray. It's a miracle at last they've qualified. Seven points. They didn't lose a single group game ahead of Croatia, Costa Rica and Ecuador. Much simpler group for them this time, fortunately. So let's go through to the second round to see how they got on. They managed to beat Argentina on penalties after a nil-nil draw, as you can see there. It was a pretty equal game. Possession-wise, Argentina were better. This is the formation Australia... Australia? Australia? Oh, I'm getting mixed up. Australia elected to play. And it looks like Argentina's goalkeeper had an incredible game, preventing Australia from winning in actual time. So they went through to the quarterfinals then, where they unfortunately came a cropper against eventual finalist Norway on penalty penalties as well Andrew Davis with the goal a striker who looks pretty good let's just look at the Australian team they've obviously produced players that are good enough to be uh, World Cup quarter finalists and they've still got our Mabil in charge they've been as high as second in the world they're currently up to fourth as you can see there behind Spain Germany and Colombia 
which is fantastic. So well done to Australia, finally getting through their group and actually made it through to the World Cup quarterfinals. They've got a player with current ability 180. He's their best player, Jesse Rideout, who currently plays for PSG and has been there for many years. They signed him for £4,500. Now this could be a problem. They're signing players from the Australian teams for very low amounts of money, which isn't helping the A-League, to be honest, because they're not you know, getting a huge amount of money from these players and then able to pump it back into their clubs. Well, so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if if, I, if you do want a part three, remember 250 likes on this video, I know we'll do a part three. You can let me know if you think I should improve anything. I will improve youth coaching. Everyone always says that, and I generally do at some point during these experiments. I will also, I think, probably improve the reputations of the Australian top division clubs and the New Zealand clubs. So lastly, we will look at us, uh, New Zealand, sorry. They've been as high as 50th in the last four years, but they're down to 63rd. I, I don't see how they're gonna get up to the level that Australia are, but they are making it to World Cups, remember. So it is possible that they could just produce a, a real golden glut of players at some point. I really want to see how they've done again, if they've actually played Australia at any point. They have, and they beat them 2-0 in the Confederations Cup, you can see here. These are the recent winners of the Confederations Cup. Australia finished third in 2045, you can see there. But New Zealand have been, I think, I think they've lost every single Confederation. They've gone out in the groups every single time, but they managed to beat Australia which is fantastic, well done. Uh, that's one up. I say 1-0 to New Zealand. Let's go back in time here. Let's see if there's been any other matches. I may miss one, so shout at me if I do. But I haven't seen any. Maybe they've only played once because they're not in the same group or region now, remember, despite the fact they're right next door to each other. So they may very rarely play each other. Perhaps friendlies they could play each other, but it doesn't look like it, does it? Australia, here you go. They lost 2-0 in the Confederations Cup in 2033. So that's 1-1. One, one. That's level. This is going to take a while, so let's keep going. Here we go. They lost 2-0 here as well. So Australia winning 2-1. That was a 2029 game. Ah, but in 2017 they managed to beat them 1-0. So that's 2-2. They're only playing in the Confederations Cup, strangely enough. And that's the end. Maybe there was a quicker way of doing that. I don't know. There might be a way of seeing head-to-heads. But they've actually won... Well, both nations have defeated each other twice. So it really is level pegging at this stage in the experiment. Australia obviously have done better at World Cups, but New Zealand have got to World Cups and haven't done that much worse, to be fair. So let me know in the comment section below if you think there's anything I can do to once again improve New Zealand and Australia, apart from the things I've already said, like youth coaches and improving the reputation of clubs. Let's see what sort of crazy things that produces. Uh, but yeah, two, it, part three, if there's 250 likes, I'll probably go towards the end of the century, holiday quite far into the future, and see what does happen long term. Thanks for watching, guys. Much appreciated. I will see you very soon.